So just to jog our memories, what we said last day, we started out going back to our basic definition of work. We couldn't use MGH because the force is changing. We said it is also the area underneath a force versus distance graph. When we graphed gravitational force versus radius, we said it's really a 1 over r squared graph. It's the reciprocal of a parabola, which those of you that are in pre-calc 12 this semester, pretty sure that was one of the reciprocal graphs that you did. It looks kind of like that. So we said a better definition of work is this is the work done lifting a satellite, say, from the surface of the Earth to an orbit. It would be that area. The area underneath this curve, I started out by saying, well, this is not really a legitimate way to derive the equation because this equation only works when the force is constant. Gravity is a changing force. But the nice thing is it gave me the right variables in the right place. Then I had to make it negative. So this is our new equation. We started looking at conservation of energy, which unfortunately is, no pun intended, a lot of work, a lot of typing. There's just no work around. The universe hasn't given us convenient numbers for this. But I would consider this fair game. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, we'll practice this some more. I can either get, ask you to find the initial radius, how high above the planet it started, or how fast it hit the planet. I wouldn't ask you to find the final radius because that would be the surface of the planet. You'd know that. Although I guess I could give you the change in speed and just say how much closer it got. But I don't think I'd do that. I could, but I don't think I will. What we're really going to look at is work. We said that work is how much fuel, how much energy you would need, first of all, to get the rocket to the correct altitude, the correct radius, and then uh, just lifting it up only gets it up there, it'll come crashing back down. We repeated that by giving it the right amount of kinetic energy. And I said to you, this is close to the longest question we'll do all year. How would it be longer? It would be longer if I hadn't bothered giving you that speed. Could you figure out the orbital speed from the orbital radius? Yes, you could go, gravity is what's pulling me in a... That's, that's the longest question. I'll do a couple like that in the homework. I won't hit you up with that on the test. I will absolutely give you a question like this on the test, though, where I tell you the orbital speed. And it's just a lot of typing. We're recognizing <coughs> that work is the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. Everybody, what's change in anything? And I've started to suggest this is complicated enough. You know, Lily, I love doing things in one step. The fact that I chose not to means I've made so many mistakes, I don't even try anymore. I found the change in potential first. I even used ditto marks and backspacing on my calculator so as to avoid making a typo. Then I found the change in kinetic. Where did we decide we're always launching our satellites from? No, equator would be if we wanted to get the boost of the speed. Where do we not get the boost at all? The opposite of the equator. Yeah, so I said, I think Santa's workshop or Superman's Fortress of Solitude has a rocket-free program. Of course they do. They must, right? Obviously. Otherwise, how would Santa deliver the presents? Of okay. Um, let's continue. A missile is launched from the surface of the Earth. Its fuel is used in an initial burst. So let's say it hits full speed right away, the split second it leaves. Let's say that VI isn't zero, VI is full. And then it coasts the rest of the way. As it coasts, what would happen to its speed? So we fired all of our rocket fuel, and now we're coasting. What's going to happen to our speed? I heard the word crease. I don't know if it's a D or N. Yeah, because gravity is slowing it down. In fact, in that case then, what's going to happen to our kinetic energy if our speed is decreasing? So, no, no, yes, yes. And I've taught you for these two column questions, which you will see in the future. Never read across. Always read down. What's happening to our orbital potential energy? Of course, because the kinetic energy has to go somewhere. Where is it going? So 
increases, no, increases, no. What's the correct answer? This might give you an idea of some of the conceptual stuff I might throw at you in your future. But there's going to be some calculating stuff. <coughs> Example four. Okay. An 1800 kilogram satellite is placed in a stable orbit with a speed of 4,200 meters per second. A says find the orbital radius and B, how much work. Okay, I mean, this is a trigger word. If I see the word orbit, what else can I say? Gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. Okay, I, don't, I may not use that necessarily, but I know I always can if I need to. That's the difference between example four and way back here, the first example to, oh, by the way, I think this example four should... I think this should be an example four, and I think this should be an example five if I do the numbering properly. I fixed that on my original now. But anyways, the first example two, the reason we, oh, first example two, here it was, we were just lifting it up. We weren't putting it into a stable orbit. Something was just holding it there, maybe invisible angels or leprechauns or something. That was why there was no change in kinetic energy. That was just how much to get it to the right height. Now we're going to keep it up there. We've got to give it kinetic energy as well. We're in orbit. So, okay, Madison, what does part A want me to find? Did you say orbit? Gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. Our gravitation equation isn't going to change. It's going to be big G, big M, little m over R squared. I think on your formula sheet, I gave it to you to you as M1, M2, and you can write it that way if you want as well. Usually when I'm talking about planets and satellites, I'll use big M for the planet and little m for the satellite. What's that going to equal? Well, M, A, C, oh, don't write A, C. Which version of A, C am I going to use, Madison? The one with the V or the one with the T in it? Oh, okay. Don't forget the little m. That's a common mistake because the little m's do cancel. By the way, what this is really saying now is the acceleration equals the acceleration, which is also true. Ooh, what do I have on the bottom here? What do I have on the bottom here? Let's get them to the same side. How would I move this R over? Okay. Oh, you wait, wait, wait. What are we trying to find? You know what? I think I would probably move this r squared to the top here. But then I would say to myself, self, is there an r squared on the top on the right? Is there an r on the bottom on the right? One of the r's is going to cancel. I'm just left with a single r behind. Lena, I need to get the r by itself. How will I move the v squared over? Yeah. That's going to give me... R equals big G, big M over V squared. Do I need to square root? Nope. No squared on the R cube root. The R is by itself. Okay, let's type this in. Um, orbital radius is going to be big G. What's big G as a number? Okay, and then big M. Are we on the Earth or Moon? doesn't say Moon, so we assume Earth. Divided by, and the speed was what? 4,200 squared. What's the orbital radius? And again, I can't emphasize enough you want to practice typing these into your calculator because we're getting fairly complicated here, right? I got... Now, I know the answer has got to be bigger than 6.38 times 10 to the 6th because it can't be orbiting under the ground. Do you get 2.26.11451? Uh, which is going to be, I'll write 2.2611 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I wrote down three sig figs here 
but I'm storing this on my calculator if I need it again to five or six sig figs to get more accurate. <sighs> Finley, what's B want me to find? Oh, that's so easy. I mean, work is just force times distance, isn't it? I can't. Why can't I use that? So I guess it's going to be the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. Are we in a stable orbit? So I can't cross out any of these at this stage. What do you want to find first? Change in potential or change in kinetic? I don't care. What's change in anything, potentially? So it's going to be change in PE is going to be PE final minus PE initial. It's going to be negative big G, big M, little m over and I think our final is our orbit, right? That's where we ended up. Minus negative big G, big M, little m over our initial. Finley, do the little m's cancel here? No, it takes more fuel to put something heavier in orbit. That's why NASA will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars reducing the weight. They know they'll still come out ahead. Right. Um, all right, let's try plugging in the numbers. Uh, delta P, Mr. Duick? Delta PE. It's going to be negative. Big G, big M. Finley, what's little m? Divided by, what's our final? And I'm going to use my answer button. Then I have a minus minus. What's a minus minus the same as? Okay. Now I do want a positive answer at the end because I should have to add energy. I should have to pour in energy. And so that's what that minus minus is taken care of. It's going to be, uh, oh, and I, what I told you yesterday was, right? Same thing times, same thing times, same. We're going to backspace and edit. What's my initial radius? Oh, radius of the Earth. You can put the 6.38 times 10 to the 6th, or if you want to, you can write R and a subscripted E for Earth, as long as you know that that's your abrev for 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. All right, let's get the first term. It's going to be negative 6.67 times 10. And again, strongly encourage you to practice typing these. 5.98 times 10 to the 24th divided by answer button. Does that look good? I'm going to get a negative answer. Nick, did you get, oh, this one works out amazingly evenly. Did you get negative 1764 and four zeros? Yeah. You know what? I think it's almost going to be less work just to write the four zeros than it is to write it in scientific notations. I'm going to write it all out. Negative 1764, four zeros. And then plus, okay, I need to get rid of the negative in the front. And instead of answer button, it's going to be 6.38 times 10 to the sixth. I see people, look, was, that, was that wrong? Is it negative 1764 and four zeros? You got that? You got that? Okay. Sorry? The 1800. I forgot to multiply the 1800 on there. So it's not 1764 and four zeros, Mr. Duick. It's that number times 1800. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Candy for you since you were the one that spoke up. I'm sorry, folks. That's an easy mistake to make because the M canceled in the orbit question, but not here. So really, we should get negative 3.1752 times 10 to the 10th? Is that better?
That's better because I think I told you yesterday, typically the energies, if I'm giving you good numbers, they'll end up in the 10 to the 10th range. 10 to the 11th, if we're going way out there, 10 to the 9th, if I'm making an unrealistic question, it would be too close to the atmosphere. And then, plus, okay. Wow, did I wreck that? I'm going to have to retype this. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, 5.98 times 10 to the 24, times 1,800, Mr. Duick, divided by 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. I missed the decimal, Mr. Duick. Whew. Positive. Do you get 1.125 and junk times 10 to the 11th? So I'll go 1.1253. All right. The change in potential energy. Those two numbers added together. So negative 3.1752 scientific notation button 10 plus Answer button. Eight point oh seven eight oh seven and change. I'll go eight point zero seven eight one times ten to the tenth. Eight point zero seven. I'll put a little box around that so I can spot it easy. And we're done. Or are we? This would be if it had just said lift it up but not keep it in a stable orbit. Did it say stable orbit, Finley? <sighs> we need a change in kinetic energy, too. What's changing anything? It's going to be a half mv final squared minus a half m. The initial square. Lena, where do we say we're launching from? North Pole, Santa's workshop, or Superman's fortress of solitude? So we'll assume we're not getting a boost from the Earth. What's that V? That's V orb. That's the orbital speed. Oh, did they tell me it? Oh, thank God. So it's going to be 0 0.5 times 1800. Was it 4200? squared. And I get 1.5876 times 10 to the 10th. Joules. By the way, what takes more energy? Getting the satellite to the correct height? or giving it the kinetic energy to stay up there. Yeah, yeah. Getting, getting it to the correct height. Is that wrong? All right. What's my final step, Sienna? What's my final step? That's why I put boxes around them, because you can see we've written so much, you could find yourself, if you got interrupted, coming back later, where's what I'm looking for? Okay. The work. And it's a fair bit of work, no pun intended. Is going to be equal to 8.0781 times 10 to the 10th plus 1.5876 times 10 to the 10th. I'll use my answer button. Finley, did you get 9.67 times 10 to the 10th? And really, I would take 9.64, 9.65, 9.66, or 9.67. There's that third sig fig I'd probably be plus or minus 2 in either direction on, but the first two sig figs I'd expect you to get right. 9.67 times 10 to the 10th joules of energy. How accurate is this? We're ignoring air resistance, and air resistance also does play a significant role. I've read that actually, in real life, 
it takes more energy to get the satellites up to speed than it does to get them up there. I'm guessing all that extra is just overcoming air resistance when the satellites are going that fast on their way up through the Earth's atmosphere before they eventually get to thin atmosphere. Part of the issue as well is the atmosphere doesn't exactly stop. It just keeps getting thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. So even the International Space Station, which is about 200 kilometers up, it's rubbing against enough of the Earth's atmosphere that every so often we've got to do a booster to keep it up there. If you really want to make it so that the amount of molecules of atmosphere are pretty much the same as the amount of molecules in the vacuum of space, it's about a thousand kilometers above the Earth's surface, which is typically considered higher than low Earth orbit. What's your hom homework? Number two. Number two is just asking, can you calculate PE with the new equation? Please notice uh, it's on the surface of the Earth, so you can use uh, our Earth. It's not a change in, it's just asking you to find the energy at that location. You'll get a negative answer. This negative answer is saying if you wanted to get that rocket all the way out to the edge of the universe, out to infinity, to get it to zero, you would have to add positive 7.81 times 10 to the 11th joules of rocket fuel to get it out of Earth's gravity well. Okay. Um, three is good. Skipping four, five, and six. Seven is a conservation of energy GG question. I can tell that because it didn't ask how much work. Nine is good. Where are we moving out to in question number nine? What does it say? an infinite distance, what it's really saying is what's your final potential energy going to be exactly as a number? Zero. It actually makes the question way easier because one of your, your potential energy terms will cancel out in this one. Way out there. A little less work. No pun intended. Um, eh. <coughs> Eleven is good. Fourteen is good. Fifteen is good. What's number fifteen asking me to find? All total energy is is add up the kinetic and the potential. Okay. Pause for a second, Mr. Duick. Look at the ultimate review. And then I'll I got another video to show you, but some of you are zoning out. You can work on the homework. Uh, do I have a take-home quiz to give you? I should check. I can give you the take-home quiz. I can. No, I can't yet. Never mind. Nope, I can't yet. Can you see if you got the ultimate review, the ultimate gravitation assignment? Make sure you have it. If you don't have a copy, this is also your chance because some of you are away and I might have forgotten to give you a copy. Um... Number four, I basically, by the way, the reason the numbers don't go up by ones evenly is I used to teach circular motion and gravitation in one big Uber unit. It's worth, uh, I think, 20% of the course because it was worth 20% of the old provincial. And so I wanted kids to get used to having to deal with the pressure. I split it up now, and I split up the reviews as well. Anyways, number four, which of the following best shows gravitational field strength varies with distance? Well... Gravitational field strength is big G, big M over R squared. Everyone look up for a second. Really, gravitational field strength varies as 1 over R squared. It's a reciprocal of a parabola. I'm not going to ask you that because I know not all of you are in pre-calc 12, but for those of you that have been, which one of those four graphs is the reciprocal of a parabola? It's not B. It's A. Anyways, I'm not going to ask you that one. Um, you can do number five. Five is good. So 
You can cross out four. Five is good. Some questions we're not going to cross out. We're going to skip because I haven't taught you enough yet. But I know some of you have said that starting these ultimate reviews a day or two before the test is a bit challenging. So the, we're basically going to tell you which questions you can handle right now. Okay? Uh, we can pass on six. Don't cross it out. You can try seven. Seven is a how much energy, how much work. Okay. Um, eight is good. Nine is good. We did number 11 in our, oh, sorry, this is energy. You can skip number 11. I take that back. You can skip that one. Uh, 12 is, you can handle. Uh, not 13 yet. 14 is good. 17 is good. Uh, we haven't talked about black holes yet. Although, well, technically you can do A, it's gravitational field strength, but I haven't talked about escape velocity, so I'll revisit that. Uh, 19 is good. 20 is good. You can temporarily skip number 21. 22 is good. You can skip 23. 24 is good. You can come back to 25 later. You can pass. Tw when I said skip 23, what I really meant, you can cross out 23. Because some were skipping that we're going to do later. Uh, 26, how much work? 29 is good. You can cross out number 30. 31 is good. We're in orbit. 36 is good. We're in orbit. You can temporarily pass on 37. 38 is good. You can cross out 42. 43 is good, asking you to find orbital speed. 44 is good. 46 is good. You can temporarily pass on 48. What does number 49 want you to find? What are you going to spend most of your time finding? No, nope. not time. How do you find, what's the equation for kinetic energy? No, not work. This did not say how much work. And I got to gently say, if it doesn't say how much work, don't be going there. Ah, you're going to have to spend most of your time finding orbital speed. Gravity is what's pulling you in a circle. Find the speed and then a half mv squared. So that's a nice little combination of both things we've done. Fair game. Okay, so 49 you can circle. And I'll leave off the scholarship questions, okay?